What's up everyone, this is David Arroyo and today I would like to cover the Procreate 4.1 update with you. Now this is a really cool update because it's filled with features. Normally Procreate updates quite frequently and it's most of the time bug fixes and you know some little tweaks here and there. But this update is really worth it. There are a few features that it's it almost feels like Procreate has made a jump from version 4 to 5. Almost. It's that good of an update. So if you have an iPad uh, and you have an Apple Pencil and you know you like drawing, honestly, I cannot see any reason anymore why you would not buy Procreate. So I'm going to dive right in and show you the cool, awesome features that they've added to this version. Okay, so let's dive right in. Um, I'm going to go into my What's New folder and you see isometric drawing. We're going to select that one. And basically for this, I'm going to show you the new drawing guide. So there used to be perspective guides in the previous versions. Now they've become drawing guides and I'll show you why. So you can turn them on. As you can see here, it's a drawing guide, one of them. And you go into your edits and here you can start seeing that you have now a 2D grid. The isometric is the one that I'm using. And you can see here in the thickness, opacity, grid size, all that stuff, you can modify that. So if I were to, for example, move the thickness, you'll see that the lines get thicker, thinner. Uh, you know, the same stuff that you could do with perspectives. The opacity, obviously, you can change. Uh, the grid size, uh, you can change. If I do this, I start changing the, 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 the actual um, uh, size, obviously, of the grid. Uh, you know, and you can obviously turn on your assisted uh, drawing here and there. This works for all the other ones. Now, for isometric, which is this type of drawing, I use the isometric guide. You can also use a 2D grid, okay, which you can move around, okay. Um, and this is really cool for, like, just, say, uh, architectural plans and stuff like that. I'll show you a, a, an example of that later on. Uh, the perspectives are the same ones that we always had in the past. So, you know, you still have your perspective guides and nothing has changed here. Okay, you can do uh, one point, two point, three point perspective. And the symmetry is something really cool where you have uh, the horizontal symmetry. Um, you know, whatever you draw here will come out on the other side or what you draw vertical, for example, here will come out on the other side. You've got quadrants, which uh, will basically copy on all four, and radial is really cool. You get really cool uh, designs. I'll show you all of that in a second with some examples that I already have set up. So what we're going to do, uh, I'll leave it at isometric and just show you, um, I'm just going to remove this, how, for example, you know, here, here you can see basically that the isometric uh, part, this is basically what you can do um, with the guide on okay so it's really quick to create some very fun things and the cool thing about the time-lapse replay now is that you have a timer here which i really really like okay it really gives you an idea of how long your video is going to be um you know and it's it's just very uh fun also while we're here another feature that's new sorry that's over here when you export your time lapse you can now choose to do a full length or a 30 second uh video really cool okay so that's one of the features that i really like uh on all the guides um you have the grid drawing which is the one that i did earlier as well it's basically really quickly like um some you know with that uh 2d grid you can do this super fast now okay something like this will take no time and that's because your lines are all um linked up to the grid so they're basically assisted and that's really the cool thing here and you know as you can see it's really useful for anything that you really want to do in terms of architecture okay then moving on uh let's have a very quick look at for example uh one of the other features that i really liked uh which is the liquify tool now we're going to do that with one of the drawings that i already made earlier on so this has different layers on it okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to link the layers beforehand so these ones at least these are the ones that i need to link so that i can make modifications so we go to adjustments and there's a new thing called liquify okay liquify has all these cool little things here push reconstruct twirl in both directions pinch uh, expand adjust and reset now i really like these because with push for example 
I can, for example, let's say I want to make his eyebrows a little bit smaller, a little bit more down, okay, and I can, for example, say, you know, his, his smile can be a little bit smaller, not too big, but say I also want to, say, uh, pinch it a bit, you know, make it just a bit smaller, not too, 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 um, too big, right, or the push, say, for example, I want him to have a little bit more of a nose like this, uh, I want... Um, you know, uh, maybe even the eyebrows a little bit more, okay? And there's so many different things that you can do. I mean, you can go really crazy on this. You can, uh, for example, uh, if you do a twirl and you start, you know, doing this and you go quite far, two fingers as usual will go back. Uh, even if you do this, you can reconstruct. There's this button now that says reconstruct and by reconstructing, it goes back to the original state though. It doesn't go back to uh, the step prior to it. Now let's say that you were happy with this. Okay, you can just uh, get out of the thingy and then now when I press two fingers, see I've got the two different facial states that I got, which is quite useful. I mean, when you're drawing, this takes quite a while to fix if I had to do it the other way around. Here, I can just do it straight away, just with the liquify tool, okay? So I'll show you again, liquify tool here. You've got a whole bunch of different things that you can do. Okay, even the expanding part, uh, say you want him to have a bit bigger lips, you know, there you go, he's got a big, bigger lips and so forth. Okay, and you say you like it again, um, you know, you can just check based on, this is the original, then we went to this, and then we just gave him a bit bigger lips. And you know, all these little things you can do and try out. And obviously it works because it's linked to all these layers. If I would have said, for example, do not link these layers, so unlink them. And I only do the um, modifications on the ink layer, what you'll get is that, um, sorry, liquify, there we go. What you'll get is, for example, if I try to push, Okay, and I only push here, see, only the ink layer will move, okay? So that's not really what we want. So that's why you uh, link the layers there. Okay, so that's uh, another very cool feature. Now, another thing, I'm just gonna, just for the sake of it, I'm going to quickly add all these layers into one. Okay, so it's one layer now. And I'm quickly going to show you the warp tool. Okay, so now in the selection tool, you've got a whole bunch of thingies. Now you've got freeform, distort, and warp. Now the freeform and stuff, they're all the same. The warp, uh, the distort is pretty cool because it gives you this feeling of being able to um, do this symmetry type of thing. But you could already do that in the previous version. And when you take off the magnetics, it's a little bit cooler because then it really feels like, you know, I'm doing this. 3D effect of glass or something or, you know, it's so always useful when you need to, you know, readjust your drawing a bit. It's so always cool, but the thing that I really like is the warp tool. Okay, so the warp tool is something that is new and kind of feels like paper, really. Look, if I do this, it really feels like it's just a sheet of paper, okay, that I'm working with. But it can also be used for many different design changes, okay? So say you really want to make big, big changes on the fly. And say, for example, you wanted him to have more of an egg head, okay, which is more shaped like an egg. Uh, and the thing is, you can also change here, right here, so, right? So it looks a little bit more like a balloony head or something like that. And you can go into the advanced mesh and modify the smaller parts, okay, to really adjust. This is very, very cool. I really, really like this feature. I mean, it gives so much power uh, in such a short amount of, you know, time I mean and that's the cool thing in such a you know with, with, with so little effort I'm redesigning this character on the fly just because I can do these liquify um, I mean this warp uh, stuff you know and it really gives a different character a different vibe a different type of feel to it okay and that's really cool so if I were to say okay that's done you know again two fingers you can see it's a big difference. If I had to do this from the beginning without these tools, it would have taken me decades. Whereas here, you know, I can immediately get very different results on the fly, you know, and that goes for everything in this, um, in this folder. So I've turned the layers back uh, to, to what they were. I'm going to take a few steps back to its original. And normally we should be at the original now. 
And so there you go. So one of the last things I would like to show you is, for example, uh, how you can now modify your layers. And that's really cool. So uh, in your preferences, you've got your gesture controls and now you've got new gestures that you can work with. OK, so for example, say let's quickly say that you want to select your layers uh, based on the touch of a finger or touch and hold. Right. Let's do that. And normally you have a quick menu here and that goes away. So if, if you've noticed, uh, there was a quick menu that was all selected and there was a little like yellow thing to say like hey that's gone now so now for example if I were to touch and hold uh, maybe here I have to do it yeah then here you have the two layers that are um, you know you, basically if you if you do this you're not on a layer there's nothing there that layer is empty but if you go over the red part or something for example it will tell you okay you, this is this part affects only the colors layer uh, here it will be two things either the shadow or the colors very very useful you know stuff like that that you can play with you can modify more gestures and say for example uh, I don't know I want to instead of the layers uh, if I were to say the eyedropper again which I still have by the way if I tap or stuff like that uh, or full screen uh, copy paste erase whatever you want it's all up to you and it depends on what you really want to use it for all right so there you go i hope you liked the uh demonstration that i did of the latest features of procreate 4.1 uh, i think they're awesome they're amazing and on top of that it is free if you already have procreate this is a free update cost you nothing okay if you don't have procreate yet and you do have an ipad pro or an ipad that's compatible with the apple pencil I see no reason why the hell you would not get Procreate anymore. It is amazing. It only costs about $10, and for $10, you get the power of everything you'll ever need to make awesome drawings, paintings, comics, whatever you want. Uh, I really recommend it. It's my favorite uh, drawing app uh, for the iOS platform. Right, so thank you guys for stopping by. If you like this type of content, as usual, leave a like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.